Hi, uh, I'm Hamish. Um, I'm the children's librarian at Avondale Library in Auckland. Um, and I'm just going to talk about our experience of setting up a makerspace and some more. Uh, so who was the team? Uh, it was me, uh, Baruch Jacob is there, uh, he's the digital outreach librarian, and Penny Dugmore is the team leader of learning services, my old boss at Central Library. That's where we did our first um, experimental makerspace. You probably um, know what a makerspace is, but I thought I might just talk a little bit about what it means to me um, and what I understand it to be. Um, I think that it's about uh, sharing, sharing community. So first of all, um, sharing a space, um, sharing resources, skills, knowledge, and projects. Um, so working with others. Um, it's about self-sufficiency which is enabled by things like 3D printing um, and increasingly the tools are enabling ordinary people to produce for themselves and for their community. Um, networked and peer learning is also very important. A um, couple of I, I like to pepper my slides with things that kids made because um, that's what I do is kids make a space at the moment. So this is a young man who is very interested in American presidents. Um, so he made this interesting little animation and that's a, a 3D tank which is um, getting queued up for printing. So why in a library? Um, we have a strategic document called Takoro, um which has a couple of directives which are well met by the makerspace. Uh, one is library spaces to activate library spaces with innovative programs and events, um, which I think the makerspace does very well. And another is to engage youth and children with meaningful play, which stimulates imagination, creativity, and learning. Um, the document that's up there, it's too tiny to read really, but it's a great one. It's called Future Work Skills 2020. And I find it personally really useful to think about um, what we are going to need to know. Um, it talks about things like the rise of AI, um, the influence of crowdsourcing, they call it superstructing, which is that organizations, um, large groups of crowdsourced people can achieve what huge organizations only could in the past. So, and it talks about what sort of skills we'll need for that environment. Um, so we needed to figure out what a megaspace was, um, and we talked to various people like Tangleball, um, which is a makerspace in Auckland, but we quickly figured out that we couldn't be Tangleball because a makerspace in a library has to negotiate with a library culture. Um, so that's, that's challenging and it also the library uses expectations of, of what, what a library is. Um, but on the other hand, um, you're taking that makerspace concept. I often joke that it's like the McDonaldization of makerspaces because um, you're kind of homogenizing it down a little bit but you're also introducing it to this massive diverse audience of um, all sorts of people of all sorts of ages. Um, we had um, an opening event called Make Explosion where we drew on the resources of lots of um, makers in our community like uh, Diamond Age who produced the 3D printers, Vivenda who's got a 3D printing business, Mine Kits, um, Applicart and lots of others. Um, and we put on a big uh, kind of uh, maker fair of sorts where people could walk up and ask questions and they did. They stayed for long lengths of time um, in, in one place asking lots of questions about 3D printing or coding or whatever technology it was. 
Um, and we got more makers coming out of the woodwork, like there's a guy called Ted Sun from a makerspace in Shanghai, which he, that's where he had been, and he wanted to do um, scratch workshops with um, kids. So that was really awesome. Um, we set up the makerspace with um, what I call platform tools because they're open, like a 3D printer can design any 3D object. We had Linux PCs, um, which was kind of a slightly radical thing to do in a library context um, because you can install anything you like onto them and you can also go home and um, install Linux on your own computer and go for it. Um, and also robotics kits, um, which you can make any kind of robot that you like out of them. So they're sandbox tools which are completely open. Um, the, the tools that are blowing me away, digital tools like these ones, Tinkercad, Scratch, Game Fruit, etc. A lot of them have um, Scratch built into them. Scratch is a kind of program where we can click together blocks visually to program things, so click together commands. Um, so it really lowers, um, it really makes it so much easier for kids to engage with the technologies. Um, and what I find is that they're all, the, the, the common element is that they've got bigger chunks of stuff that you can just kind of slide around and click together rather than, you know, the insane amount of detail which is involved in most digital design um, if you want to get started. And I think what will happen over time is they'll get um, dissatisfied with those big chunks which you can't alter so that they'll get in and start hacking and, you know, getting more and more control. Um, I wanted to talk about a successful um, event that we had, which was a game making jam. Um, a whole bunch of kids came in and made computer games. They were working on them all day using this uh, game fruit. Um, and we made a virtual arcade at the end of the day where everyone could play each other's games. And there was amazing um, kind of social learning. It was like, it was, it was an exemplary kind of what I have in my head is great maker space. Um, all the kids were sort of um, figuring out, you know, someone would have a problem and no one could figure it out. And then an hour later, some other boy would be like, oh, this is, that's how you do it, and, and rush over and um, show, show the other person who needed to know. Um, so we had really great experiences with off-site. Um, like in places like Orake Marae, who had an education festival, Otara Park Jam, um, and Festival of Education, um, where we got to just introduce it to the, the, this maker concept and the idea of a library as a maker space to an even wider audience than usual. Um, challenges. Our staff readiness to to take on the idea of a makerspace and making things and not being ready, um, not knowing everything, not being the expert necessarily and learning as you go, learning with customers. Um, we need um, very good technology and people who love technology and love to share um, learning about the technology and love to facilitate learning in a big group, like in that game making jam. Um, and yeah, so I call those people maker librarians. It's just a little idea that I have in my head. Maybe we need maker librarians. Like that's, you've got your children's and teens librarian and your information services, like you've got a maker space librarian or a maker librarian. Um, a couple more things. Um, which I found really interesting is that um, kids are used to coming to libraries and playing computer games. And then um, when you ask them to create computer games, that's quite, that's quite a big strain and quite a big shift. Um, so that's, that's quite a challenge. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about that. And my kind of pie in the sky is 
like a persistent community of practice around different things, like a persistent community of practice around game making or 3D printing or whatever it is. And I, we still haven't achieved that. Um, so it's something that I am keep hammering out on. A couple of ideas that I've had is um, Mozilla Open Badges is a project that I'm really interested in where you can um, have uh, these badges which are created by other institutions of learning other than schools and they recognize learning like um, a 3D printing badge or a badge for hey I made an app and got 100 people to download it or something like that. Um, and also I saw from a big one that I watch is um, Chicago U Media. There's, they've got a sort of a series of, it's, they're called sort of media spaces, but it's about making things, it's about creativity. And um, they talk about um, role models being really important, having um, maker experts, you know, artists coming in and inspiring youth as well um, as, a, as a sort of a motivational force. Um, so it is spreading amongst a whole bunch of different libraries with um, certain people who are talented, like there's a Glen Eden Robotics Club, um, there's a Panua um, space where they're doing music production and other ones, and there has been interest from libraries across the country. Um, so I thought I might just play this. If it will do it, no, it won't do it. Oh, yeah, well. You ready? Go. Okay, I think we have captured this. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it plays Taylor Swift. The funny thing is, it, it starts playing Taylor Swift every time you shake it, so it'll sort of start playing 15 copies of the same song, um, which, which we didn't really predict when we designed it, I think, but all, the, all good fun. Thank you. <laughs>